one of the important <laughs> lessons about what you just said is as a writer, not to put your eggs in one basket, yeah. right? If you've got one script and you're peddling that script and it's constantly getting rejected, um, you know, it, it, it makes much more sense to have a lot of projects which you can, because, uh, you know, you'll go into these meetings, especially in the States, you know, you'll have experience of this. You'll, you'll go and meet an executive and they'll say, so what, what do you got? You know, what do you got? <laughs> and, you, you know, you'll pitch them this great idea and you, they'll have this kind of blank look on their face, completely <laughs> disinterested. And I think you have to be ready to say, okay, well, you know, you have to be able to read the room um, uh, and, and move swiftly on to the next project and, until eventually say, oh yeah, I like that idea, send me that script. Uh, have you had experience with that? Sir? Oh yeah. yeah. And, um, make, and make sure that you have different lengths of pitches. Yes, yes. that's the right. The most famous one is, I'm sure, he, normally he speaks at events like this, is Nick Powell and Steve Woolley, who, who, who loves regaling us with his um, absolute beginner story when they were trying to set it up. And uh, he said it's happened both ways, where they were meeting, you know, the head of a studio, and they thought literally they would get five minutes, and when they heard what it was about, they would get chucked out. And somehow this guy said, "Right, I've cleared the morning for you, uh, I, you know, and, 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 you know, because I really love England and I'm really up for this, you know, blah 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 blah." And they literally had a pitch that was only five minutes and didn't know how to fill between the two of them forty-five minutes, you know. And the reverse is also true, where somebody says, "Look, I'm really sorry." I'm just about to get, you know, probably get fired. So I've got to run to the commissary or somewhere, yeah. walk with me, and you have two and a half minutes, and if you have an hour pitch, yeah. then that doesn't work. Mm. Um, I, I uh, on, on the rare occasions when I feel like executives are zoning out of my fantastic pitches, I just generally raise my voice and speed up and go, and bam, and then suddenly they're back. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, you know, just uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, they're, they're, these guys listen to ten pitches a day. You know, I got this pitch meeting now. Uh, you know, so you go in and they put the smile on, but ultimately they're all really, you know, really as jaded listening to pitches as you are doing your pitch, if not more. So, you know, you got to make it interesting for them. But you know, if if they if they think you've got something, if they've read you, then the pitch is part of it. But yeah, maybe they've got a comic or a novel, you know, sitting on their desk and they start. Talk, telling you about it and they start pitching you and you just have to decide it's, it's nice to be in the luxury position where you're only interested in pitching your thing and you're not interested in getting any job you just want this job and if they don't like it then you're off most of the time you don't have that luxury and so you're in there to pitch but if you if, if they say what else you got you just make up something in the room or you know you just uh, talk about a book that they've got on the shelf behind them I read that book that's great oh yeah we want to do something in that area or whatever and it's, it's a relational business so, yeah, relax. and I, I think that you know the important point is once you've finished a script, um, it, it, it's not a time to rest. You know, as Paul said, just keep writing. You know, um, once you finish that script, start something else. Keep generating work. So you you've built a body of work. I think that's extremely important. Um, 